Hello and uh, welcome to part 3 in this series and by the way, Happy New Year! So before I start with uh, today's progress I want to address a question that was posted in the last video, uh, part number 2 Evan, uh, sorry, Edson asks Hello, how do you send the summarized data at the prompt? So this is a question that is very common um, and we used to see variations of these questions quite frequently in the OpenAI community forums. Something like, how do I give my uh, GPT-3 prompt a context or a backstory or some knowledge about some uh, history so that when you make further uh, requests, it will have that context. So I think if we forget fine-tuning for a second, there is no way to do that at all. Everything is part of the prompt. There is no um, attribute that you can add, like a context or a summary, that we will uh, include uh, to generate the prompt. So uh, just to show a little bit more of what I do, in the, in the previous video I explained how I would um, generate the summaries and then include those summaries plus the N previous chat messages in the next prompt. So let me show you my prompt for the talker component, which is the chat basically. So I have a kind of a introductory uh, paragraph about what is this AI, what is its purpose, uh, what are some key things like of its personality. This is needed only temporarily while I'm not using the fine tune model. After we fine tune, this will be uh, deleted. I won't be needing this anymore. But for now, because I'm using the generic uh, Da Vinci model, I'm using this. So after this introduction, I have a separator. I inject the summary here. So this is the summarized, the last, uh, most, most recent summer, summary generated. Then I inject the input. By input means the N last messages, the most recent messages in the chat, both from the user and from the AI, and finally the timestamp and the AI uh, trigger that will make him speak, make it speak. So this is the way I am in all prompts, in all requests to Da Vinci, I am injecting the summary uh, in this manner. No rocket science here. Um, okay, so that's that for today. Let me show you uh, not many big changes because I took a break also during the new year and today I am restarting working on Armin. But let me show you the few things I've worked on. Uh, first, some small quality of life improvements. In the log I've included the model that was used for generating this and the temperature that was used as well. Um, just to make sure I can compare things and keep track of what's working and what is not working. Then in the analyzer, I started the analyzer. Um, the analyzer will, will pose some challenges for me. Let me show you uh, turning on the meta. Um, so this was just a few minutes ago. Um, it asked me, so how is your AI project coming along? And I said, funny that you ask. I took a break during the new year, resuming working on it again today. I will record a new video showing the progress so far. So the analyzer kicks in after each message. Uh, it extracts an action, not always, but sometimes. It identifies uh, memories that need to be saved. And then uh, memories that are already existing. And finally, all of that is passed along with the chat to Da Vinci. Uh, and Da Vinci will uh, generate the reply. So here you see, that's good to hear. I'm looking forward to seeing the process of made. Ping me if there's any way I can help. So, problems here. Uh, and just to illustrate this a little bit more. So, there's a user input. The analyzer first tries to get the action uh, and this action means only very specific things it's not like every prompt has an action 
I'm struggling a little bit with this part. I'm, I think I will delete this action in the future. But right now, because I don't have fine-tuned models, having a way to identify more clearly what action is helps the next prompt. Identify new members to be saved. Uh, so this is this kind of uh, syntax here with a plus. So everything inside square brackets will be a new memory. Then the memorizer uses this to inject existing related memories. So that's what you see here. And then all of that is passed to the talker, which will build a prompt and send a request to GPT-3. So the problem here is that because the injected uh, related memories are coming after, what happens, as you see here, is that I have duplicate memories. So this will poses a problem because I have duplicate a lot of duplicates and probably in the next prompt it will identify this again and will add a new memory again. So I have a memory summarizer which will join them and remove duplicates but still it's making requests on the, on the summarizing of the memories. So there's a lot of requests being done due to this which is not ideal. Um, I've experimented a few ideas of injecting the memories first and then asking for this part so that it already knows that this memory exists and it wouldn't uh, identify it again as a new memory but the problem is right now without the fine tuning without this part uh, in many cases the memories are not identified correctly due to the chat uh, history so this part really needs some uh, adjustments I'm trying to work on it and I think after the fine-tuned models are uh, inserted are generated and I start using them I will see a lot of improvements on this and, and I, I will probably be able to delete all of this and simplify this uh, quite a lot right now I'm using the generic model so I need a lot of instructions and prompts and uh, uh, the analyzer for instance is a few shot prompts it has like four or five examples so that it works and then it still fails many times so the fine tuning will i think help me a lot uh, so speaking about the fine tune i started working on it i have a very simple page just to list uh, previous fine tunes that i did these are all from last year or two years ago when i was doing experiments with the ai that generated its own source code and right now there's not many features here but just the start of this page that i will work on uh, next and the big thing is the export so the export functionality allows me to prepare data for the fine tune which will come next so i can select which part i want to export so let's say i want the analyzer i can specify a start date and an end date for the exported data uh, so this will be useful for incremental fine-tuning I know that I fine-tune until last year, end of the year so now I can fine-tune again from January 1st to today I don't know if I'll use this or not but I thought it would be a cool uh, feature to have so after this I press fetch data and it's going to identify all the data just going to dump it here for me just to see if everything is okay and uh, it says it I it has identified 105 messages so every individual uh, chat line including the analyzer and any metadata that is part of the analyzer export so different exports have different metadata to be included so the summarizer for example doesn't include the analyzer so you see I have less uh, messages found the talker includes the analyzer and the summarizer so it has 115 so if I go back here and then I have 35 of the selected type this means I have 35 analyzer messages inside here which roughly translates as the number of JSON lines I will have in my final exported uh, file so it will generate also a file name for me based on today's timestamp and the exporter I'm using then I can just click export and it, it's complete I can show it to you 
uh, so which one was it? Analyze it 2013. And here we have uh, the prompt completions. So as you can see, some are very big, some are smaller. And each, each uh, exporter has its own logic. They are not the same. So the analyzer chains uh, the conversations until an analyzer comes. Then it breaks there, then chains again. The summarizer kind of does the same thing with the summaries. And the talker does it also with the summaries, but includes the analyzer in the middle as well. So different logics. And I think I will include another one here that will be useful, which will be the memory summarizer. So the memory summarizer, every time memories are joined because they are very similar, the memory summarizer makes a request uh, with a specific prompt to join, remove duplicate data, but try to keep all the important facts uh, still in the, in, the, in the new summarized memory. So it works okay, but I have to use DaVinci because Curie is not good enough. And of course it gets expensive. So my idea is to also fine tune the memory summarizer and I will probably need to also record all the memory summarizations that were done and then be able to export them, be able to edit them, you know, same thing as I did here with the edit mode. Uh, I will need to create that for the memories as well. Um, but yeah, so, so far that's the um, progress since the last video. Uh, I think the next uh, few steps will be the fine tune flow and few tuning tunes to the analyzer to include everything from the previous summary. So yeah, there'll be a lot of trial and error with this analyzer thing because it's such an important part of this and I will need to still generate a lot of messages for generating the first fine tune model. As you can see here, I only have 35 JSON lines, which is really, really small. I need at least 100. So I also need to talk a lot with the AI to generate the conversation, tweak the analyzer, tweak the memories. And uh, yeah, I hope next video I will show some cool stuff again. Thanks for watching and uh, see you soon.